What is up guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over some tips for zero build to end game. In a recent video I kind of asked what videos you guys want to see and end game or late game tips was the most requested thing by far. So today I'm going to go over some things that should help you win more once you make it to end game. If you guys do enjoy this video, find it helpful and informative, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and comment down below how many wins you have so far in chapter 4. The biggest thing and the most important thing I think for helping you win in end game is going to be to get comfortable fighting. And this is kind of counterintuitive to a lot of players because BRs or battle royales, when a lot of players get on them, they just want to win or they want to get their first win. And that is something that people tunnel, tunnel vision on a lot very early on. And what this does is it leads to them playing very passive and just trying to like make it to end game in hopes that they can get like a lucky win once they get there. And this can work sometimes, but in the long run, it kind of hinders you because most players are going to be nervous once they're in end game, right? And a lot of players are also going to be nervous whenever they're in a fight if they're not comfortable fighting. So when you combine those two aspects of nervousness, the player that is inexperienced and not comfortable fighting is probably going to lose the game to someone who is used to fighting and is fine fighting. So I think being good at fighting and getting comfortable fighting and not being nervous fighting is super important for making an in-game. A lot of people kind of are naturally nervous in game like i said and if you're already nervous in fights it's gonna be very hard to actually get the win versus anybody that's decent like i said you can get some lucky wins sometimes where things just kind of fall into place but if you want to consistently win i think getting comfortable fighting and getting good at fighting is very important if you think of it like a pyramid fighting is like the base of the pyramid i think and a lot of people want to skip to the top but if they're not comfortable fighting they're just going to end up losing the game the next thing is also going to be like before you get end game and that is going to be to get the items that you need to win the game so this kind of falls in like a similar like perspective as the other one players who really just want to win like spend all game hiding they don't really get loot they might be like really shambles on heals but they're just like concerned about making an end game and hopefully getting the lucky win but if you don't have the items that you need to actually win the game the likelihood of you winning is really low you know if you don't have any shield for whatever reason you don't have any extra heals you don't have a shockwave hammer you don't have the shotgun or the assault rifle you like using not necessarily talking about rarity as much but just like try to have the items that you want to actually have to win the game and if you don't have them try to find them so this can be things like checking the hollow chests in the area seeing if you can get better weapons um, the coolers in the area, seeing if you get more chug splashes. And then also the shockwave hammer, I think is incredibly important. Um, I've had so many people kind of tell me that they're losing games to the shockwave hammer or that they're losing games to the Deku smash. And I, I feel like the easiest way to deal with both of those things is just use mobility of your own. And people kind of act like it's just random. And it is random to an extent whether or not you get a hammer or you get mobility. But there is an NPC on the map that sells it. And if you do actually get in a decent amount of engagements over the course of the game, odds are you are going to get some form of mobility. So if you're just consistently making an endgame with no mobility for whatever reason, that is a problem. You know, that's not just random at that point if it's consistently happening. Maybe get in more fights so you can find one that way, buy one from the NPC, whatever it is. But you want to make it to endgame with the tools that you actually want to actually win the game. There's also two arguments that are really great for endgame this chapter, and that is going to be Storm Mark and Forecast. Forecast always shows you where the next zone is. This is really helpful for endgame because you can position yourself properly and know exactly where you want to be and then also storm mark pings everybody within a certain radius of you and this is always great to have but it's really helpful in game because when the zone is smaller pretty much everybody is going to be within your radius already so it, it really really works positioning is also super important and in game obviously this is probably the thing people focus on most but i feel like people don't really understand it as much i feel like there's two types of zones or two types of games there's games with like one power position and zone or one spot that you really want to control whether this is like a hill a house maybe one of those castles that exist on the map if there's only one good structure on the map or one structure that is much better than the others this is what people would call a power position and this can even just be elevation like i said if there's a hill in zone and you can use that terrain as cover it could be really helpful and then there's also zones where there's pretty much none of that and it's just kind of like wide open and there is maybe some cover but there's nothing that's necessarily much better than the others so for like the power position zones if there's like a, a castle a house a hill something that's obvious that it is the best spot to control in game playing for that can be helpful but if the lobby is super populated you're probably going to get third partied so it's something you kind of got to keep in mind if you are someone that's controlling the power position you don't want to get too tunnel visioned on one particular opponent because everybody else in the lobby kind of knows, okay, that castle probably wins game. So when they start fighting at that castle, I'm going to third party it. So if you are controlling the power positions, make sure that 
you are prepared to get third party and you're not too tunnel visioned on just one person. When a zone is very neutral and there's not really any great spot in zone, I feel like playing edge is really nice. Even if the power position is edge of the map, this is really good because you don't have to worry about behind you as much. Like players can make storm plays, but it's really uncommon in pubs. And if if zone has closed behind you for a decent amount of time, odds are somebody's not just going to run around or run come from behind you. So if you are on edge of zone endgame, it does make it a little bit nicer that you only have to worry about like the potential in front of you whereas like if you're center zone you have to worry about 360 degrees so keep that in mind for sure i think being edge of zone is really nice especially in a zone that doesn't really have any like ideal spot you know and there's a lot of end games where just like whatever player third parties ends up winning and this is really unfortunate but that's how it plays out a lot of times even like solos would be like a 1v1v1 scenario but in team game modes if you have a 2v2v2 like three separate teams Odds are the two teams that fight will get third partied by the team that isn't fighting, and then they're just going to lose. So you want to like make sure if you are fighting endgame that you're not getting too tunnel visioned on it and that you're prepared to get third partied. And also you can kind of bait people into third partying you if like you just don't want to commit way too much into a fight most of the time. Um, I have videos on this on my channel, the inside the mind videos or the spectating videos I think are really good for going over these endgame scenarios. And the most recent inside the mind video I posted, I actually dealt with this endgame uh, where I was fighting somebody and I knew I was going to get third party. So I kind of started trying to find the third party before they actually got involved. Another big mistake I see a lot of people making is they just kind of do nothing in the end game. I think this circles back to what we talked about before and that they're not comfortable fighting. They really just want to win and they're nervous. So they kind of just do nothing. And then zone ends up getting really small. And then they lose to someone like hammer smashing them into zone or something along those lines. I've seen a lot of players complaining about the hammer smash. And anytime I see a clip of this, it's because the end game is super stagnant and nothing is going on. So while, yeah, there's times where maybe you want to wait to see if the other people fight and, and then like you can third party it. If you're doing that too much and just nothing is happening consistently in the game and that you're consistently getting like hammered in a storm or something along those lines, you probably want to start doing more during the game to potentially eliminate people and potentially get the kills. This is also why storm mark can be really helpful. Because you could see where everybody is and then kind of make decisions based on that. But even then, even if you don't have Storm Mark and you don't know where anybody is, you can kind of make educated guesses on where people might be. Because, you know, if you're not fighting, they're not on you. They're not together if they're not fighting. And so, like, they're probably on opposite sides of the zone. You can usually make, like, a triangle out of the final, like, parties and endgame if they're not actually fighting. So, those are... I think far and away some of the most important in-game tips, but I also think it's super important to just be decisive. I see this a lot in the spectating videos I make where people are just super indecisive and they kind of just waste time doing nothing. And oftentimes, especially in this game, I feel like even if it's a bad play, if you commit to it and you just kind of like follow through, it can work out a lot of times because, you know, Fortnite isn't like chess. There is a lot of mechanical and individual skill involved. You can make bad plays and just outscale the opponents and like it'll be fine. If you commit to it, but if you're like super indecisive and you don't really know what to do and you just kind of end up doing nothing, I feel like you're going to lose. And I feel like this also kind of comes back to what I was talking about before with being comfortable fighting and not being nervous. I feel like the more people ner are nervous in game, the more likely they are to be indecisive or just kind of mess up on really small things. And a lot of that just comes from experience playing. The more you play, the more comfortable you are fighting, the more comfortable you are in game, the less often you're going to make those mistakes. But that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys find it helpful and informative. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Dang. Well, this was probably a mistake. Someone is up in this drop here. This was like the first like what the f skin. I remember when they brought this out. It was a part of the season six battle pass. And that's kind of like what I said I wanted with defaults wearing Halloween costumes, but like it is so hard to see anything when you're using that skin. I thought it was a 1v1.
This stinks for me, man. It's not a 1v1, but this guy's just wasting as much of my time as possible. Alright, there he is, sweet. Like, was concerned with that guy the entire time. Jeez.